cast to test this thing to see if it'll work. What if we have enough voltage? Just keep swinging on its arm. 1.2. It's on its way. You know, I got a worry. Report from the front, Captain. Lieutenant McPherson has a worry. This is no joke. What? What if he can read our minds? He's gonna be real mad when he gets to me. 1.4. Keep moving around, you guys. Keep it quiet. Daddy, I'm scared. Am I wrong? Or are you supposed to be in bed? Daddy, there's a man in my room. Sweetie, you just had a nightmare. I was not. I saw him, Mommy. It's my turn, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to go have to see who this is who is bothering my little girl. And if he can read minds, then he's going to be real mad when he gets to mine. <laughs> He was over there, Daddy. He was watching me. There's nothing there, Megan. See, it's closed. He scared me, Daddy. I know, Megan, but it was just a nightmare. Now, my big girl isn't going to be afraid of some little nightmare, is she? Hmm? Can you keep a secret? Okay, well, when I was a little kid, I had a lot of nightmares. Monsters. Monsters? I mean, they were in the closet, they were under the bed, they were everywhere. But my dad, he told me the secret. And then I wasn't scared anymore. Monsters cannot get you if you hide under the blankets. They can't? They can't. That's the rule, and even monsters can't break the rules. <laughs> That's my girl. That's good. See, the only problem with that theory is that blankets can't hide you from dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, now. now you're going to sleep, right? Right. Good night, kid. Nothing, uh, I tell you, honey, I thought, huh. nah, it's absurd. It's like daughter, like father. Uh, oh, and the man, it was a chair full of clothes. Well, she has your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering where it went. <laughs> She's okay, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. Here's your story. in there, I have salad right here, and I have wine. Not for you. You get milk. All right? How does that sound? Yeah, oh, like paradise hey. regained. <laughs> Why don't you go wash up, honey? Hey. What's wrong? 
wrong? Now, what makes you think that something is wrong? Clues, Sherlock. The last time you served wine was the day your car got banged up in the school lot. So what is it this time? This morning in class, a student asked me where I was during Vietnam. So I told him I was in school. You were? I remember it distinctly. I neglected to tell him that the school was in Canada. Well, it's none of his business. That's what I told him. So why do I feel so guilty? <laughs> no, no. Is it true? I'm doing it again, mm -hmm. aren't I? Is this the part where you're supposed to tell me that I didn't do anything wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Good. She still remembers all her lines. You are a perfect woman. Thank you. Maggie, come on down. Dinner's ready. Megan? Megan! Oh, honey, you didn't wash your hands. The man was upstairs, Mommy. He talked to me. Oh, honestly, now come on. Let's get you scrubbed up for dinner. It's okay to play pretend, but you mustn't blame somebody else if you forget to do something. It's not pretend, Mommy. Okay, there you go. It's a little better. What? Who? The, the man. Me. The Who? man in the wheelchair. He was there in, in the mirror. I mean, oh, wait, I mean no, he wait, was in the I hall. I, I saw him but... in the mirror, and then he, he just... He must have come past you, Jeff. A man in a wheelchair? Yes. Look, honey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, I think I would have noticed somebody coming past me in a wheelchair. And besides, how could anybody get a chair down these stairs? Well, if he didn't come past you, then he's still... He's gone, Mommy. Oh, Maggie. Don't be scared. He's a nice man. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. I think it's time I found out. he's here. But you didn't do anything. Oh, no. I can think of something I did. I got drafted. But I chose Canada. I copped out on Vietnam. And now it looks like Vietnam is catching up with me. See, maybe Vietnam was my fate. Maybe I was supposed to die there. And maybe this legless ghost is the guy who went instead of me. Or maybe he got killed because I wasn't there. No. 
This is just your guilt talking, not you. You said no to a dirty little undeclared war. You helped stop that war, Jeff. Now you know that. No. I don't know it. All I know is that I have to leave because if, if I go somewhere, then he'll follow me and you and Megan will be safe. Oh, maybe, but maybe not. Jeff, whatever this is, we've got to face it together. Well, you're right. I, I... You are right. Yes, Susan. Your husband's on five. Thank you. Where have you been? I've been so worried. Denise. Is it you? Of course it's me. Are you all right? You sound really strange. Strange? <laughs> no. I'm fine. Denny, how are you? Denny? You haven't called me Denny since high school. Jeff, what is going on? I just... I just need to see you, Denny. Just for a little while. I'm, I'm at home now, Denny, and I need to see you. Okay. Okay, I'll be right there. Right? You look terrible. Huh. Yeah, well, I feel worse. I just spent the night in my car on Frontage Road. Is uh, Denise here? She went home about five minutes ago, right after you called. Right after I called? I didn't call. Of course you did. I put you through not ten minutes ago. I ought to be able to recognize your voice by now. draft lottery and a landmine. somewhere around 
1971, we came to this fork in the road. And you went one way, and I went the other. And we ended up in different places. Jeff? Spaceman? On your road? What happened? To us. <laughs> to us. Oh, Denny, yeah. To you and me? Oh, well. Gee. You died in a motorcycle accident when I was in Nam. The guy you were riding with didn't believe in helmets. That's why you're here, because I'm guilty. I'm guilty, okay. That's all right, but if there's any retribution owed, then it's to me, and to me alone. You have to leave them out of it now. No. We went to Canada together. We made the decision together. I'm a part of him and everything that happens to him. That's why I loved you so much, Denny. And you, what? I mean, come on. You think that I would hurt them? God. <laughs> and they say us vets are crazy. <laughs> and tell me why. I'm dying, man. I mean, you know, the doctors, they never tell you what's really going on, but I could feel it. I could, and it's okay. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I lost everything important to me a long time ago. I lost my legs. I lost my girl. I lost my future. I even lost Jeff. And the spaceman. Ooh, yeah. I mean, come on. He doesn't have much going on except some really horrible memories. <laughs> so, you know, I'm laying, I'm laying in the in the VA and, and I'm just waiting to get it over with. Come on. And I'm thinking. And I'm wondering. You know, how it would have been with Denny and me. You know, if I'd have done it differently. And I'm laying there. And I'm wondering. And I guess I just wondered myself here. I just wanted to see him, brother. You did okay, McDowell. You did okay. I wasn't even there. I wasn't there either. I mean, I wasn't there for Denise. I wasn't there for Megan. I think, uh, I think uh, it's probably time I went. No, you can stay if you want to. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'd like to be nice, but uh, I can't. I, uh, got some nice memories now, though. Thanks. The flashbacks. I mean, it must work both ways. You and me, we're the same person, right? I have some memories. I have some good memories. Maybe if we touched. No, no, you don't know what you're talking about now. But I have good memories the day that Denise and I got married. Our honeymoon. The day Megan was born. No. <laughs> No, it's no good, see? Because then, then you'd have all that stuff about all those men dying around you. Then you'd have all the years in the hospital and in this damn chair. No, and then you'd remember 
Everybody backing away from you. Everybody watching you. Watching you. You know? Come on. Hey, I mean, you'd be waking up with nightmares. You'd be screaming. I'm not afraid of a few nightmares. I can always just crawl under the blanket. We make our choices and afterwards wonder what the other road was like. Jeff McDowell found out and paid the toll. A lesson in courage and cartography from the map makers of the Twilight Zone.